All right, class, settle down, settle down. It is time for another class here at the Podcademy, and this week we're going to be studying math. That's right. <laughs> now listen to this. If you take the numbers seven, four, three, and you put them in a specific order, that makes the number 743. Consider your minds blown. I'm Alex. Ah, hey, it's me, the bad kid in the back of class. You ever get the feeling that that teacher's just a spooky ghost? The way she, <laughs> the way she talks is very spooky. And also, I, my hand passed right through her. I'm Justin. Whoa. I'm Pete. And we are going to be talking about the second to last episode of the n- second season of, I was about to say ninth season. <laughs> Uh-oh, That's somebody wrong. needs a math lesson. You were, being, you were talking a big game about math a minute ago, and yeah. now uh, not putting it together. Yeah, I, it's completely gone out of my head. That was another lady, by the way, doing that. But I don't know who that is. It is uh, the same sure, name, sure, sure. It's Betty White, but under the pseudonym <laughs> wow. Alex. Wow. <laughs> Doing, thank you for doing our podcast, Betty White. You can go back to being an internationally renowned superstar. Yay. We're going to talk about 743, and this is a packed episode, lots of action. Ooh, sure Interestingly, is. I think, uh, and I love this episode, uh, lots of stuff happens, you know, just big action packed episode, lots of fun stuff, but there's a ton of questions coming off of this that I'm sure we're going to want to delve into. And for those of you listening, Requisite spoiler warning. We're not going to talk full full recap here. We're going to jump right into it pretty much. Um, so go watch the episode, even though you probably already have, and then come back here and check it out. Uh, so uh, we have these like four things running at the same time, right? The big one that we kick off mm. with is Klaus, Allison, and Diego are trapped in a hall. Vanya is about to explode, which is going to kick off the apocalypse. One by one, they try to stop her. It's up to Ben, who is a ghost, ben. to come over and actually stop her. We get a very emotional scene Aww. where Ben disappears, but talks find you off the lift uh, ledge, excuse me. And uh, with the apocalypse prevented, Diego realizes, oh, I can stop JFK from being killed. Uh, So he goes to try to tackle Reginald Hargreaves. Uh, There's a little bit of a twist trick there. JFK still gets killed. And Reginald Hargreaves uh, goes, talks to the shadowy cabal who has set up the murder of JFK, is very mad at them. So does what anybody would do in that situation, takes off his face and probably eats them. Lots of stuff to talk about yes. there. We'll come back in a second. Totally and discuss expected all of that. that. Predicted that, expected that. Yes. Yeah. Jumping over to Luther and the Fives. We got Old Five and Young Five. They clash a lot. They kick Luther in the nuts a bunch of times. Bunch and of ultimately, times. Old Five gets thrown through the portal, seemingly uh, finishing off the loop that we got way back in the beginning of Umbrella Academy, though I think there's a bunch of questions about time travel, exactly yes. what's going on there as well, that we'll have to talk through. Uh, meanwhile, back at the commission, bunch of stuff going on with the handler. Uh, she is consolidating her power, but at the same time, AJ, the fish, and Herb are kind of working <laughs> against her. Hands some information to Lila. It's not quite the information we expected. Seems uh, yeah. that uh, Five was the person who probably killed her parents. Maybe. Again, some questions there, exactly what's going on. Uh, and uh, the handler turns Lila against Five and Diego and everybody else. Uh, and then the last little bit we need to talk about is concurrently with what's going on with Vanya picking up with the cliffhanger of the last episode. Harlan looks like he's ready to explode. This leads to a whole thing that goes on with the family back at this farmhouse. Sissy ends up accidentally shooting off the gun because of Carl, who kind of freaks out. It bounces off Harlan, hits Carl. He's lying bleeding on the floor when we're last left there. It looks like Harlan is about to explode or go off or something like that in the barn, certainly shaking and glowing quite a bit. Uh, so, again, lots of things in this episode, lots of things to discuss. Um, to me, though... I would say the emotional center of the episode and my absolute favorite scene, and one of my favorite scenes in the show, is Ben's goodbye to Vanya. Oh, oh just God, I can't even so, bawl my eyes out. Yeah, and Ben really emerged this in the last few episodes as this like real true heartfelt uh, center for the show, and the fact that he goes out right as we're getting to know him, uh, really. Yeah, is, that's like, that's heartbreaking. I yeah we're. He's such a great character, such a fun part of the show. I really hope he's not gone. I love uh, Ben is just one of my favorite things about the show, and it would be really upsetting to lose Ben. It's the same way like when yeah. you just get to know a goldfish in the last, like, at mm-hmm. second two of um, his or her memory. Just before you eat that goldfish? Just before it goes down your throat, and it's just like, yeah. oh, we barely really connected um, in your short memory, and now you're gone. 
But you think about how, how like you could travel around and do shows with that goldfish. I mean, the goldfish that can arrange things and uh, you mm-hmm. know in in their bowl and do stuff like that. I mean, very that's just, slow moving so, show. But I agree with you. That would be fast. Yeah. What yeah, era yeah. of the circus are you talking about? <laughs> Pete? Are you talking about like tur- well, turn of the century? Well, time travel, you could go back to any of the great you know circus times and and really cash in. Oh, my dream um, to be a goldfish handler in a Victorian circus. <laughs> Uh, diet come about one, come diet all money. over the next three hours, this tiny goldfish will put three numbers on the bottom of the bowl. I Remain have tuberculosis, patient, probably. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, just to talk about both of these characters, and I know I've watched through it. I know you guys have not watched the last episode. I haven't seen it. So uh, oh, no spoilers or anything like that. Just to humble that. brag a little bit. This, this really is not a humble it. brag. The show's been out for months at this point. Yeah. Uh, the we were just very late with the podcast. Uh, the AJ thing is a huge bummer to me. We talked about this over the last, uh, uh, whenever he was introduced, that he's such a big, fun character in the comics. Yeah. It's been very much sidelined here, and that's a bummer to me. I appreciate the fish called Wanda shout out that we got with Eating the Fish. Very traumatic um, scene in movie history. But at the same time, <laughs> to see him go so quickly. Especially in the goldfish uh, kind of community. That's, what? Especially in the goldfish community, that's a huge, tragic yeah, yeah. Uh, they don't remember it very much, but it's <laughs> oh, big anyway. come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pete's uh, descended. And then on the other side with Ben, wonderful scene. I agree with you on the arc. Uh, and I know uh, there's been certain frustrations to the fan community uh, with Umbrella Academy with the treatment of Ben, the one Asian American character in the cast who didn't talk pretty much the whole season, which is a trope in and of itself. And then finally gets an arc and then he gets killed. Uh, and that yeah. kind of sucks. But. Take it on its own in this episode. Really beautiful work from both of the actors. Beautiful goodbye scene. The way it was shot with the glowing and the, the pieces glowing. coming off of him. Oh, Heartbreaking. Man. Can you hug me as I go? Just. Oh, oh the, you're you. not alone at the table anymore? Like, come on. Like, oh, just so, so touching. And, and I can't wait to hear what. You know, he wanted to uh, say to Klaus, so I'm look, really looking forward to that. But, like, such a touching scene. And the way he talks about, like, all of this has just been gravy. I mean, Ben is such an amazing character and such a... He, uh, ben saves a freaking day, for Christ's sakes. And I, I'm just super bummed that Ben is gone. Hopefully, with time travel, we can we can save Ben. Yeah. Uh, I'll just uh, just to take a step back, though, because I think we'd be remiss not to mention this. The lead into this, which, A, is very funny that they didn't send Ben in to begin with because you'd figure the ghost would be the one you could send through the energy waves. Yeah. But right. the beginning of this episode is awesome. And I think the oh, yeah. first time we've seen this team act like superheroes in yes. two yeah. seasons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. It was I great. love that sequence. Um, I, and jumping between their sort of not great attempts to get to Vanya and then her getting hit with the memories. Um, we well, get Diego being compared to Antonio Banderas, I thought was a oh real hot, hot hit. That was just so funny because Klaus is like, before you die, there's something you have to know. And I'm like, oh, my God, what is this going to be? This is so touching. It's like, you really... Look like Antonio Banderas with your long hair, and, he, and then he's like, "Thanks, man!" Like it was hilarious. Diego really felt that, and that that moment really felt like a show that is confident and like ongoing. Where it's like, "Yeah, we could do it. This is a maybe this is a bit on set, and it's like this belongs in the show. Let's do that." Like it feels very much like sitcom from the '90s in season five. Yeah, it's great stuff. I agree with you. Uh, and uh, to be clear to people listening, I think that's a compliment. Like, yeah, they got to the point. It is. Yeah, where they are comfortable enough to do all of this stuff. Um, a place that I don't think they were at in the first season. In the uh, second 100%. season here, they definitely are. And I mean, like, I think, Alex, you're like a sitcom in its sixth season. You're like... Um, oh, wow. Dude. That's the nicest <laughs> kind of thing like, you've yeah, ever said to Alex. Definitely at the point where it's like, whew, uh, they got to figure out a finale here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, come on, Frazier, get it together. Kind of spinning their wheels. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Who's dating who? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
just to wrap up the storyline here, past the Ben thing, we get Diego trying to stop the JFK assassination, the double twists of it's not Hargreaves on the grassy knoll at all. In fact, it is a double and doing a ha ha gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and then we get that wild reveal at the end. Um, l- let's talk about that. What do you think's going on here? What did you think of that? In general, well, I, I it reminded me of that we got that one weird scene. Um, was that this season or last season with Hargreaves on like a golden sky uh mm-hmm. area? Like, I think that was the last episode of season one. That that was so weird and seems like not at all related to anything we've seen in the comic books. Um, so I uh, I feel like this is directly related to that. Yeah, that was uh it makes a lot of sense because I I really hated him as a father. He was so cold to his kids and everything was so weird. Um that like when that happened I was like, "Oh, okay, well that makes sense." That, you know, which sometimes, you know, you get so angry you got to take off your face and eat a bunch of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. I do definitely know what you mean, absolutely. I feel that way uh, about yeah. uh chicken nuggets. <laughs> I <laughs> I understand this is part of the slow mystery that the show is unfurling, and it certainly seems like they're getting towards some sort of here is the origin of the Umbrella Academy thing. Um, It's a little too much for me. Like, I don't need it. I don't need to know where the babies came from. I am much more interested in what is happening to these characters going forward. And... It's a weird show. You have a guy with a monkey body. You have talking <laughs> monkeys. You have lots of monkey stuff going on. But monkey the idea business. that Hargreaves has interests on the dark side of the moon and is probably a space alien himself or something like that probably created the kids of the Umbrella Academy with some sort of alien technology. That's too much explanation. I don't know. Uh, whether, I don't know whether that's accurate. I don't know whether they'll explicitly state it. But personally, I don't need it. I um, it does make me happy that maybe the reason there's like it wasn't just putting Luther on the moon for no reason. Like maybe mm-hmm. there was a reason to have him up there, and it was important to him. So that made me feel a little bit better about poor Luther's circumstance. Uh, I thought you were gonna say circumcision. Um, I uh, think <laughs> <laughs> that um, this uh, I, I I hear your point, Alex, but I also think. If season three of Umbrella Academy then becomes like the quest for the secret origin of the Umbrella Academy and there's that emotional context because this show's always been about this dysfunctional family coming together and getting closer and closer to find out what really matters to them. And if we get a season where they're really going back to their origin and they have to prove that they're not just this byproduct of science, they are a family, I could be here for that. Um, if it is, yeah, if mean, it is just, I'm hope. Oh, go ahead. If it is just this, like throwaway, like, oh, we need to explain where they came from for like a TV audience. Because I do think a comic book would never feel that they need to do that because it's just like it's comic book logic that they're just all superheroes. Yeah. Um, so if they're doing it just to be like completists, then we don't need it. Yeah, I mean, I really don't want to see a. a uh, in season three, you know, kind of it opened up with uh, Hargreaves just jerking off from the moon. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if we really need that part, you know? Mm. Spoiler. Mm. Do we need that? Do we need that <laughs> part? This is a good... Ah, uh, let me think about this one. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm 50-50. Get, I'll talk about it next episode, whether I think we need... That's true. That okay. scene. And obviously, we that haven't I seen the last episode, so that could be a big chunk of what we're about to check out. Um, <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything. No spoilers. It is interesting. He's such a cold father, and perhaps him being an alien explains that. But then why did he care for that fucking monkey so much? He loved that pogo. He did. Yeah. did. yeah. And mom. He loved mom. And also, why? So Luther then takes on this gorilla body. What's up with this guy and uh, Simeon's? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Guys, He's it's, a Curious George fanatic. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That curious. Would be all, umbrella. Uh, all right. Let's move over to the Luther 5, Old 5 thing, uh, because there's lots to talk about there. Pete, I'm sure you want to talk about the nut kick, so take it away. I mean, the <laughs> what's great about the nut kick is not only is it just the fact that they, like, 
it's a slow motion nut kick, so it's like happening as they're kind of bouncing around and fighting each other. So it's like a nut kick on top of a fight scene in like a slow motion kind of sequence. Mm. Uh, mm. Very impressive. I mean, if you're going to do a nut kick, this is another level of nut kick that I don't know if we've ever seen in television or film. So wow. I've, I've got to say, like, hats off to the legends that made this nut kick possible. <laughs> legends, groundbreaking. <laughs> Putting all the America's Funniest Home Videos or America's Funniest Videos now to shame. With all the <laughs> their n- nut jabs and whatnot, um, I loved uh, dancing with myself as they fight and teleport here. Yes, as yeah. Luther is really feeling every bit of that uh, nut kick. Um, and you know, it's funny. <laughs> who are you rooting for in this? You as have, you would, yeah, you know, as you would. You feel it first. You feel it. You know, it's like time travel. First, you feel it, and then they're like they're reverberations. You know, like butterfly yeah. effect as it yeah. flows through your body. Yeah. Destroying everything. Oh, man. And then you end up with um, uh, a real uh, a paradox. Um, do you, uh, who are you rooting for in this? A younger, older five or older, younger five? It's funny you- because we've had younger, older five the whole time. So it's like I have, like, I'm like pulling towards that five. But, you know, doesn't it not matter as long as just one of them lives? It's okay. Like, yeah. I think I agree with you. I think we identify with younger, older five, but older, younger five is probably more in the right here. I don't know. I think younger, older five is out of his younger, older gourd. An older, younger five, I think, is despite the fact that he looks more decrepit, is actually um, uh, younger in his um, righteousness. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Older, younger five uh, was less kind of psychotic because younger, older five, uh, as we saw, went on like a murdering spree. And that was insane. So it kind of makes you want to go for older, younger. But it's tough because I'm so attached with younger, older. Mm. Mm. And uh, let's talk about the portal moment. So uh, <laughs> younger, older five finds out about the equation and how to fix the equation, yeah. but also get kicked through the portal. So do you think that fix things so that now he comes Wait, you're talking about older, younger five, you mean? Older, yeah, younger, I'm sorry, I did get that <laughs> yeah. wrong. I, I don't want to get too confusing. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I older, got confused. <laughs> older, uh, younger five you, gets kicked through the portal. Uh, do you think he came out as older, older five, or do you think they changed it and he was able to fit... Do you, sorry, do you think he changed the equation? <laughs> so I do. So I do five. think he changed Or it. I think, would he, because he was kicked through, he wasn't able to change the equation, so he came oh. out as younger, older five. Yeah, suck it, teach. You well, can't keep up with our older, younger brains. Uh, I would like to say, though, I'm glad they kept that uh, the the bit where uh, Klaus throws the thing through and then it hits Luther. I was so glad that that, uh, that was really funny. Um, that was very I think actually, to your point, Pete, while it does seem like a throwaway joke, I think that proves that he did not fix the equation and that this was happening as well as it had happened before. Yeah, I feel like that probably makes the most sense, right? That they didn't change the loop. They closed the loop. Um, why younger, older five <laughs> doesn't mm-hmm. remember any of this or maybe he does now is an open question, but yes. uh, yeah, his surprised imp- expression being kicked there through there, I think implies that he did not have time to change the equation. We do see Umbrella Academy season one as we see it and move forward from there. I also think the younger, older five is being affected by the um, uh, encountering yourself in the time stream. So I think that may be also why he's not able to remember the mm, events as they that's went possible. Down. And also he may be a fan of older episodes of the TV show, younger. So he's an older, younger, younger, older oh, guy. Oh, wow. You know? <laughs> younger fan. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see what you're getting at. Uh, okay. <laughs> so let's jump over uh, to the Handler Lila storyline. Uh, oh. Lots of interesting fun stuff going on there. Pete, one of your favorites, Herb, showed up. Oh, must have yeah. Been happy Herb about that. kicking butt in this app, man. Taking care of business. Herb, the man behind the scenes, making things happen. Why do you like Loved Herb? It. What's not to like about Herb? He's starting a revolution, man. Uh, he seems like he sort of bails out on all that stuff. What are you talking about? He told Lila, you know, like he was he was super on top of things and was able to understand what the fish was saying. How are you going to hate on Herb, man? 
I don't know. What he, would you have liked Herb to do in that situation? What what's what's making you so upset about Herb? He just seemed like a revolutionary last episode, and this he's just uh, back to being a, a Herb. Oh well, sometimes you got to Herb it up until it's time for the revolution, man. <laughs> Put that on a T-shirt, dude. Sometimes you got to Herb it up <laughs> until you get to the revolution. Um, I thought this was fun. I mean, we get the um, the seven four three um, in the stones and all of that. I, I like that because it almost – it's played in this episode as sort of a, a red herring. Like it seems like it's finally their chance to take down the handler and uh, come to find out it it, uh, it doesn't do that at all. It just reinforces her yep. sort of brainwashing of Lila. And the fact that it does center on Lila as the story point here is nice because it makes her a big part of what I think will – the story of the the season is and the last episode and i like her as a character and i hope she gets together with diego well i i agree with you in that last part but i i did also really like the detail that the there's so many filing cabinets that you need a bicycle to get around to get to filing cabinets i thought that was a fun detail there uh but i yeah the fact that lila confessed to herb that was a great moment there where you know and only herb's gonna get that kind of truth out of you Mm-hmm. Where she was like, no, I love him, but don't tell anybody or I'll kill you. Like, that was a great, great Herb moment. Anybody else? And that's a completely different scene. I don't know why you're hating, Justin. It's still talking uh, up the Herb moment. Last thing to talk about, we should uh, go through everything going on with Sissy and Carl and Harlan. Uh, this is a plot line that I think we've been pretty into this season with some back and forth, depending. Uh, this definitely seems like the culmination of everything going on there. Culmination. Uh, how'd you feel about how it all went down and what are your best theories in terms of what's going on with Harlan? Well, it seems like maybe Harlan is the uh, person who's going to bring this giant war on. It seems like Harlan has those powers. And if Vanya couldn't control it, uh, Harlan's going to have a hard time. So um, I think uh, the handler saw whatever she was kind of like seeing Vanya to use as like Harlan's the new kind of little new nuclear codes, if you will. So uh, I really liked Sissy's like, uh, you know, with the gun in front of the car, like, uh, you know, demanding for respect. That was amazing. I'm so happy that Sissy kind of like clean, came clean with everything. Um, and that bullet moment was crazy. Yeah, I mean, it, it is to relate this back to um, the handler's plan. Her line was, I'm about to become the most powerful woman in time. Um, mm-hmm. And how does Harlan fit into that? Is he, uh, is this the world ending event and she somehow gets power from that? Um, because he, he, if he has a, f- a fraction or maybe more of Vanya's powers now, he could definitely cause the apocalypse with what's happening to him. Yeah. Yeah. And what I maybe like about this is uh, it gets Vanya in the position to be the person to talk Harlan down. She's someone who now has full. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe have control of her mm-hmm. powers and she can get there and and cut through and really help him. Um, as far as the story goes, I mean, the the bullet bouncing off and going, it was a little it was like I was like fine with that. It was like a little. Um, yeah. A little uh, made for TV movie style. Yeah, it, to me, it felt like the core of the story is Sissy and Harlan, and Carl getting killed was like, yeah, all right, that's good. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. <laughs> yeah. uh, before we move on here, any other bits you want to call out about the episode? Well, I'm wondering if um, Lila is playing her mom, and prote- like I was hoping that maybe Lila really knows that her mom did it to kind of just confront her mom to see what she would do. I'm hoping that's what's happening because Lila getting played like this is, is playing with my emotions a little bit too much. It would just be surprising to me that she wouldn't get it. Like, she knows what her mom does, and she knows that Five, for many years, worked for her mom. Like, how could she not assume that he was the one behind it right. unless she is fooling her? I thought that was sort of out of character for Lila to be like, yep, got to go kill this Five yep. guy. Yeah, I also yeah. thought it was interesting. Still talking about the handler, like at the end, there's like there's an anomaly at the agency. It's off the charts, and she kills the dude. Is that always in? Was that always in her plan, or is she improvising? Because it felt a little bit like she was improvising. 
I, I'd say the improvising part. It's been a little unclear other than consolidating power exactly what she's been doing the entire time. There certainly seems like points without getting into what does or doesn't happen in the finale, but there certainly seems like points throughout the season where she's like, all right, my plan is to get five to work for me. Now my plan is to kill five. Now my plan is to kill Diego. Now my plan is to recruit Diego. It, it There's no consistency necessarily what she's doing, and as an arch villain, it doesn't quite work, even we, though she is super fun to watch all the time at the same, at the same I, time. And we could all agree that uh, outfit that she was building was glorious. Uh, that was pretty impressive as a super villain outfit, right? We're all in agreement yeah, on that. One hundred percent, one hundred percent glorious. Just what glorious. I was all right, before we wrap up here, who gets top marks this episode? Justin, we'll go to you first. Who gets uh, top marks? I'm so glad you went to me first because you know I'm going to give it up for Ben. Um, he yeah. uh, really the emotional core of this episode, as well as a couple episodes before this one, leading up to it. And really one of the most memorable, beautiful, dare I say, glorious moments of this show was this sort of side character, uh, Ben, uh, giving, being a hero and then give, sacrificing everything to save both his family and the world. Really, really great. Uh, Pete, what about you? Top marks for the episode. Uh, uh, I gotta, Pete alarm. I got to give it to <laughs> Ben as well just because um, – uh, there was only one person who could go to this underwater place and then also go inside of a violin, and that was Ben. I feel mm-hmm. like any of the other kids would have gave him up after the, well, I'm just going to sit next to this violin and not look inside. So I feel like, uh, Ben, we hardly knew ye, and all I wanted was more. Um, but thank you for saving the world and everything that you did because oh. uh, you were the man for the job. Pete, sorry, that alarm going off was the um, Herb heartbreak alarm, and you not, <laughs> you not picking Herb really broke his heart. Oh, Herb, I'm sorry, man. You know, you know you're know, you my guy, but Ben died, and I got to pay a little respect. So, mm-hmm. you know, still time for you, Herb. Herb's, uh, got a, Herb's got a gun to his head right now. He's like, Come on, don't say that about Herb, dude. Come on. I, uh, at the risk of making it a triple Ben pick, which I definitely would go for, uh, I'll just throw it out to Klaus. Great line about Antonio Banderas <laughs> and the hair really made the episode for me. Well, no, uh, when he said, I'm sexy trash, I lost it. That was hysterical. Great stuff. Just a really good episode across the board. And really honestly, super fun to watch. If I had a second pick, I would give it up for Luther. He is oh, the yeah. goofy, he, like the, the clone moment of like, don't shoot me. I'm the, I'm the real one. Uh, the sort of yeah. take on that. Uh, it was so funny. And Luther is truly, it's like he's in a British farce. Uh, this, it's this whole when he was like, I'm getting really tired of this. Like, that yeah. was really funny to the way he played that. It's good. Yeah. Everybody. Had, uh, I think he had a bit role. I watched Terminator Dark Fate the other day. Uh, and he has a very quick role in that movie as like a future lieutenant commando, whatever. It was so serious. And I was like, nope, don't believe it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nope, don't want it. The, the line where Ben said he treated like he treated you like a bomb before you were. Oh, come on. I mean, that was just great stuff. And if you want more great stuff, you can support us at patreon.com slash comic book club. Also, we do a live show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to Crowdcast on YouTube. Come hang out. We would love to chat with you about Umbrella Academy, iTunes, Android, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice to subscribe and listen at Podcademy on Twitter. That's the place to follow this. Got to check it out. Really cool <laughs> Twitter feed, everybody. ComicBookClubLive.com for this podcast and many more. Until next time, keep counting your numbers, everybody. Pete, where should I send Herb's Tears? To your home address? Oh, or come is there on, a PO man. Box? Oh, you're breaking my heart. Breaking my Herb. <laughs>